What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com, back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So today we're going to go in and we're just going to kind of mess around with Placemaker, the uh, location modeling extension. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So uh, a couple things I want to note about this extension. The first is this is a paid extension and it's probably one of the more premium ones. So it's got a little bit higher price point. It's definitely targeted at more of like a commercial type audience. That said, there is a trial version that you can download to uh, check it out and I'll link to that up above. Um, the other thing I wanna note is I am an affiliate for Placemaker. So if you do end up purchasing a license for Placemaker, I will receive a commission. So, and I'm gonna walk you through just kinda what it does and stuff like that. So you're welcome to go give it a try, but I do wanna make sure I give that full disclosure on that. Um, so let's go ahead and just uh, kind of jump into this thing. And so the first thing this does is it imports its data from OpenStreetMap. So OpenStreetMap is an online map that basically contains, it basically allows people to make contributions and stuff like that. It's a fairly detailed map software. So it's got information in here for buildings, for paths, for roads all that different stuff. You can see I'm kind of scrolling through in Denver to give you just kind of an idea of what those maps look like. And it's got a few different layers and everything else. So if you were to come in here and you were to change your layers to like the cycle map, for example, this would have like trails in here and stuff like that. So it's got like public transportation, all that different stuff. And somehow there's building data in here as well. I'm not 100% clear on how that works. So, but it is in here, but that's where Placemaker pulls its data. And so the way that this works right now is what you do is you install Placemaker. First thing you do is you just open up this Placemaker dialog. And all you do is you're gonna come in here and you're gonna click this button right here to select a place. And so right now what this does is this brings in um, locations based off of SketchUp's add location function. And that's the other thing I want to note is this is going to change. Uh, you can see how when you open up changes are coming, um, when you open up the add location function, um, this does come up with uh, changes are coming to the add location feature. Basically what's happening is after May 22nd of this month, uh, the satellite images and the terrain from Google Maps are not going to be available in SketchUp anymore. And the reason for that is actually Google is removing access to that API, I believe. So this isn't really a, a SketchUp decision as much as it's a Google decision. And that being said, I do not know how this is going to affect functionality for Placemaker. So I don't know if the terrain's still gonna work. I know SketchUp has some stuff lined up to get new map data in here, but it may only be available for pro users. I'm not really 100% clear on how that's going to work. So for right now, you can come in here and you can select Trimble Map or you can select Google Sat Satellite to still pull in the satellite data, but that is going to go away. Um, and something new is gonna get added, but I don't know what it's going to be or how it's going to affect Placemaker. So that may be something that might kind of affect your decision for if you wanna purchase this extension or not, as you won't, may wanna wait and see how those changes work, but just to give you kind of a heads up. And so the next thing is when you come in here and, uh, because this is using OpenStreetMap, there's a lot of data in here, but it seems like the data gets better, um, like the bigger the location is. So places like New York City, Chicago, stuff like that that have a whole lot of people seem to be detailed out a little bit better. Um, so I'm gonna use Chicago as an example right now just because there's a whole lot of data, a whole lot of buildings in here. So first thing you're gonna do is you're just gonna select a location. So in this case, I've selected a location in here. I've got a little bit of water on the side and we're just gonna go ahead and click select region. And when we do that, it's gonna let you grab an area just like this and then you can click grab. And so when you click grab, what that's gonna do is just like any other time you bring location data into SketchUp, um, it's gonna bring in kind of a map right here. And it's not super high resolution or anything like that. And that's the first thing is with Placemaker, you can come in here and you can bring in imagery. So with Placemaker, you are limited in the amount of imagery you can bring in, only in the sense that if you click on this and try to bring in some imagery, you get a certain number of tiles to use every month. So a certain number of tiles of high resolution imagery, and that has something to do with uh, where that imagery is coming from. Um, they get charged for that stuff getting brought in. So you get 100 tiles a month 
um, and you can see you can kind of go through those pretty fast but in any case you can bring in those tiles to bring in that high resolution imagery so but like for example if I was to bring this in I would use 64 of my hundred tiles this month but let's go ahead and do that um, so if I have this in here I've got my image in here just like this and then if I click download what's gonna happen is that's gonna bring in all of this different high resolution imagery as opposed to the kind of low resolution stuff and it's gonna bring that in on a different layer and so you can see what I did you can see how it's kind of bringing these in by tile right here and it's kind of over overriding this stuff that's in here basically it's just bringing that in on another layer so if I turn the location snapshot layer off you can see how that's bringing this in here just like this so you can see how this is a lot better imagery in here for sure it's way higher resolution and all of that so that may be one uh, one solution for the Google map data going away um, that being said you know if you find yourself doing this a lot then uh, you may end up you may end up having to pay more for more tiles you can buy more tiles every month if you need to bring in a lot of data honestly I don't necessarily see you needing to bring in a lot of that data but you can see how that did bring in that high resolution imagery so the next thing you can do is you can bring buildings in well there's actually several different things so first of all there's this option to click make place and that would import everything so that would bring in all the water that would bring in everything except the imagery where you'd have to use tiles so that would bring in all the roads all the paths all the buildings all the water all the trees so so, and if you click that, it will bring all that in, but that'll take a while because it's got to generate a whole lot of stuff. And so let's start off and let's bring in the roads, actually. So if you click on this little drop down right here, what this is going to do is that's going to basically generate the roads based off the info in Open Map um, or Open Street Map. So you can see how you can set all the road widths and everything else. Uh, if you had the terrain in here, you could click Merge with Surface. Um, but for now I'm just gonna go ahead and bring these roads in and that's gonna take a little while and that's the other thing is you have to click on this um, you have to select an area in order to bring this in and that's partially because you can bring in multiple areas and we'll talk about that in a second but what you're gonna do is you're just gonna select this and then you're gonna click on roads what that's gonna do is that's gonna come in here and that's gonna generate all of your roads um, based on the map data but it's not just bringing those in straight off the map it's bringing in the roads off the map and then it's generating the roads based off the widths that you create which is why this takes a while because it actually has to draw all the roads in as geometry all right so you can see what that did is that came in here and that generated all your roads just like this and they're actually in here as SketchUp geometry so if I was to come in here and I was to turn off the location, you can see that would just leave your road geometry in here. And the other thing you can do is you can click on roads or road lines. So it brings these in on their own layer. So you can click between the roads, the road lines, all those different things to see them individually, or you can just have them all in here. So that brings all your roads in here and you can see that's pretty detailed. So, and if we had merged this onto the surface and maybe I should have done that, but if we'd merged it onto the surface, then you'd be able to come in and kind of color these um, in if you wanted to as well. So if you needed to like delineate these somehow for like a top down view, just like this, you'd be able to do that as well. Um, so that's the roads. It comes in and generates those. Let's go ahead and bring the water in now. So as you can see, this location in uh, Chicago has a whole bunch of water running through it. And so what that's going to do is that's going to come in here and that's actually going to generate geometry in your model for the water. So in just a second, this will all kind of turn blue. And again, note part of the reason that some of this takes a little while to come in here is because it is generating this as geometry. So sometimes some of this curves, some of these curves and stuff like that, it is bringing in a lot of lines and points and that kind of thing. And if you go up to your model information, for example, and you look at this, if you look at your model statistics, you've got 15,000 edges in here. So this does bring in some geometry and everything else. You do have to be a little careful, especially as you start bringing in multiple different areas. Now we've got our water, we've got our roads. Let's go ahead and bring in our buildings. And so if you look at your buildings, you can come in here and you can set your building heights and your level heights and all of that if you want. 
um, or it'll bring it in based on the data in OpenStreetMap. And that actually came in pretty fast. Um, but you can see how it brought in all this different building stuff based on what is contained in OpenStreetMap. So now you can kind of do a fly through in here, um, stuff like that. Uh, the first person tools are pretty good for this, specifically like the walk tool or something like that, because that keeps you on kind of a level. It keeps you kind of level um, when you're walking through, so it's good for moving forward and back without having to worry about all the stuff that comes with the orbit tool and that kind of thing. So anyway, you can see how you can bring this stuff in. You could get down to eye height if you wanted to. So like for example, if I was to type in an eye height of six feet, it would bring me down to six feet. And then this is actually kind of what this would look like if you were flying through town or whatever. And that's another thing that I want to point out about Placemaker is if you come in here and you click on this little uh, Placemaker tour button, what that's going to do is that's going to give you a side by side with your um, with your Google Street View. And this is another function that I'm not 100% clear what's going to happen with the Google Map change. Um, you can see how if I click and drag in here just like this um, in my map, or in my model just like this, it'll also move my view around, or if I click and drag in my street view right here, it'll also move my viewpoint around in my model. And one really cool thing that this does is if I zoom in on my map view, just like this, or my street view, you can see how this is changing my field of view on this side over here. So it actually zooms in and out with your mouse. And you can see how if I zoom like way out, it'll change my field of view to kind of match that. You don't want to go too far because you get some kind of weird distortions and stuff like this. But if this function stays, which I assume it or something like it will stay, um, it's a really cool function. It's really, it's really nice for me to just kind of get an idea of my location, get my bearings, that kind of thing. It's really good to be able to kind of pop something like this up um, and kind of show people like what the actual context is and stuff like that. So again, I don't know how that's going to work with the new map data and everything else, but that that is something that if it stays is a really cool function. So, and then you can do some other stuff too. You can bring in trees where people have indicated that trees are and stuff like that. One other thing I want to kind of note though, I'm going to go ahead and close this. But one other thing I want to kind of note is each one of these buildings gets brought in as its own group. So like if I come in here and let's say I double click on this building, you can see how that's in here as its own group and the base is too. So like for example, if you wanted to come in here and you wanted to have a building um, in place of this, like let's say you were going to tear this down and build a bigger building, all you would have to do is select these groups just like this and you could delete those out and then you could come in here and you could create your new site plan or you could also put that on its own layer and uh, so you could turn that layer off for the existing building. So like for example, if I was to take this building, group these three pieces and then create a layer, whoops, over here in my layer section. So if I was to call this old building and then put this group on the old building layer, what I could do is I could turn that off and then I could create another layer for new building and then come in here, just kind of sketch out my building. So like, let's say I wanted it to run most of the way across the site. There we go, kind of like this. So, and then push pull it up and let's say my base was gonna be really big and then I was gonna come in here and I was gonna model a taller piece to this building. Something like this. Like let's say I just wanted to come in and model something like this. What I could do is I could take this, I could put it in its own group and I could put this on the new building layer. So now what I could do is I could turn my new building off and turn my old building on. So you could see Okay, here's how the old building looks with the skyline. Turn that off, turn this on, and see, okay, here's how the new building would look with the skyline. So it's really good for taking stuff and getting that context and stuff like that, and it's really easy to work with. And uh, I will say, like, even if the map data stuff kind of goes away, you know, just the ability to bring in all these different buildings and stuff like that is still a really cool thing. 
So, and then the other thing I want to note is I've got kind of this section right here, but it just kind of dies off. Well, let's say, for example, that I wanted to get some more data a little further down, just like this. All I would have to do is I would just have to kind of move my map down just like this. Click select region, grab that. And it's, it's going to tell you that this is geo reference at a different location and you may get some poor alignment. I haven't really had any problems with this. So I go ahead and hit okay. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna import your extra, your extra space just like this. Well, then you just kind of do the same thing and I'm not gonna use up any more image tiles right now, but basically you would just click on this and you would just say buildings, for example. And what it'll do is it'll bring the buildings in for this second location and it'll probably take a little while in order to do that um, just because you're starting to get a whole bunch of data and your model and stuff like that but you could actually bring whole cities in just by doing something like this and you can do the same thing with the roads so you can bring in all these roads over here as well so it's really easy to bring this stuff in like literally i just brought this in and then just clicked a button so i mean it's really cool for being able to get that kind of context and stuff like that and you could probably use this for like highway modeling and that kind of thing too if you really wanted to or road construction modeling but you can see how now you can see how the road kind of stops because i haven't brought in the extra road data down here but you can see how now i can fly all the way down just like this and then I could click on my placemaker view and it's still going to bring in the same kind of view um, just from this location so you can actually bring in a lot of da data and stuff like that by doing this so you know and we can go ahead and like let's click on this piece and see what kind of trees we can bring in the one thing I've noted is generally it doesn't seem like you bring in a whole lot of trees at the moment um, like, yeah, it said right here, there's no open street map data available for that piece and the trees. So somehow people indicate this, um, like I'll click over here and let's see what that brings in, if anything. So like you can see how you've got this park over here Well, there's trees indicated over here. So it brings these in and you can see these come in as 2D face me components. So they don't create a whole lot of extra geometry or anything like that. So that is something that comes in, it can happen, but I have found that that is probably the least detailed thing. So like if I click on this right here, out of that whole area, I got a couple trees over here and a couple trees over here. So if you're looking for like super detailed tree models and stuff like that, you're probably not going to find it yet, but that function is in there. So you can see how I can click though um, between these different layers really quick to see where the water is, see where the buildings are. You can see each one of these things separately. So all that kind of high resolution imagery I brought in, um, that's all in here as well. So a lot of functionality, pretty easy to use once you kind of get used to it, stuff like that. So that's where I'm going to end today's video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Is this something you'd like to at least try out? Um, is it something that's kind of outside your price point? I just love to know what you guys think about this. I think it's really cool for city planning and that kind of thing, but I'd love to get your opinion on that as well. I just love having that sketch up conversation with you guys. Uh, if you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new sketch up content every week. Um, I will put a link to this extension uh, right below here. Um, like I said, I am an affiliate for this program. So if you do end up purchasing it, I will receive a commission. Um, but in any case, uh, hopefully this was at least educational to you. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.